right, how exciting is this? Los Angeles to Belgrade, um, Mark to Vukashin, welcome. Hi, nice to meet you, Mark. You too, man. Um, good having some initial conversations and uh, a shout out to uh, to our buddy Ethan Mayers for uh, for introducing us. And um, thanks, Ethan. Thanks a lot. Absolutely, we'll give him you know brownie points and a and a sticker later for uh, for all that. Um, hey, it's great to have you. I, I love um, you know sharing and hearing stories, especially international stories of people making a difference and and leaders who care, which is what this series is all about. So. Can you start by briefly, don't tell the whole story because then there won't be anything else to talk about, but briefly introducing yourself, you know, about your family, you know, where you come from, things like that. Yeah, so essentially, um, I've been growing up in a small town in Serbia, uh, northern part, and that's primarily um, land of agriculture. Now, it wouldn't be anything like um, Indiana or Arkansas or something like that, but it's still very flat and lots of things grow here. And uh, the funny thing about that part of the land is uh, one of the most fertile soils uh, in Europe is actually in this part of the land. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, there's the saying that everything you plant here grows quite well. So agriculture has always been a part of my life. To a certain level. Um, at the same time, I've been educated as an engineer, uh, studied in uh, Belgrade, studied in uh, Madrid, um, have, been have been working internationally as well, um, uh, run or managed part of the companies here in Serbia, primarily with lots of engineers uh, developing advanced technologies, IoT stuff or automotive stuff or, um, you know, different uh, really actual stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, during that kind of road and evolvement, it's really, um, you figure out that, for example, being an engineer, you have this, uh, I wouldn't say a gift because you actually have to develop that skill um, to actually build or create things. But then you often ask yourself, why do you create something? Or why do you actually dedicate your time to, I don't know, testing a specific feature within a car uh, environment. You know, why is this specific sound so important? And, you know, different people, different answers. Uh, but essentially, um, this whole story led us to, um, you know, why are we doing, you know, the things we are doing right now? It's always, you know, as lots of authors and wise people say, start with why. Um, essentially, it's, um, you know, through whole of that experience and development, uh, we've gotten to this um, thing that we're doing right now that we think can actually make a massive change. And that's how we are. And that's why we are talking uh, today, really. And tell us a little, uh, tell us a little bit about your family. Um, well, what can I say? Um, we're probably a traditional family here, like, you know, um, Kind of parents, and I have a sister. Um, I'm I have three boys right now, so it's like um, you know, that's a part of life um, in the sense of um, it's fun. It's a different type of fun, but um, it's challenging. And I think uh, whoever has kids knows that that's really uh, the only holistic, the only real holistic project you have. Nothing happens overnight. It always takes a lot of time to actually get there. So. I think that also influences uh, a lot on the uh, uh, the approach to the business we have. We know that it takes time, basically. How old are your children? Um, let me think. Fourteen, almost eleven, and seven. So these are, uh, you know, um, I, I think uh, in different sports we can probably assemble a proper selection here. So that's. Uh, <laughs> that's um, one more interesting thing, um, and it's going to be linked to the other part of the story. Uh, my granddad actually uh, has had a vineyard. When uh, I was small, I remember that, that I've been going to that specific vineyard with him. Um, I'm not sure if that's really what uh, kind of has uh, enabled us to, uh, you know, work on the vineyard that we're doing right now, but essentially... Somehow, I, I wouldn't say I blame him, but he's, he certainly has some influence on what we are doing right now. Well, it's, yeah, it's good to hear that. Um, yeah. We're yeah. getting a little... It sounds like your grandfather, in, in one way, for sure, was, was somewhat of an influencer to you. Absolutely. Um, absolutely. Um, 
I think um, talking of influencers, uh, um, it's I, I think really a personal experience. Um, you know, people you actually physically meet or you spend some time with, or you see them in action doing something specific that a specific moment in time you were interested in. That's what kind of makes these, you know, uh, forever lasting uh, impressions and uh, uh, you know uh, values you stick to. So, you know, as I've been mentioning, my granddad, he obviously, uh, you know, made an impression on me. Uh, uh, other granddad of mine as well, um, you know, he died when I was really a little boy. I was uh, two years old, but there I still have this specific remembrance of spending some time with him in a specific garden where he cuts roses for whatever reason, you know. No, it's, so, a, good reason. <laughs> it's a good reason. We'll ask you about influencers in, in, in a bit also. I wanted to... I'll go a little bit more into what you were saying, because um, personal experiences, obviously, we're human beings. Personal experiences often motivate us in a certain direction. And so you have had a journey where you, you landed on agriculture, wine specifically. Um, and I wanted to know, you know how, you, how you felt about that with respect to the ability to make both an economic and social impact in your community. Yeah, well... Um... I think that there's no easy answer to that because um, nobody actually knows what future brings. But uh, what we know is, or at least we think we know what's possible. So um, um, I, I think most of my personal decisions are kind of gut decisions. I, I have a good feeling about something. Mm -hmm. um, I know it's sincere. I know it's genuine, and I want to persuade some, you know, persuade some pursue a kind of cause or, 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 or a track. And it's essentially about, you know, doing the, the right thing. And uh, as it evolves, um, it can only, uh, you know, if you plant the right seed, it's going to grow into a beautiful plant. So I think uh, that's more or less what we are trying to do here. Um, and especially, um, you know, with this uh, viticulture thing and our, um, you know, product, which is like a, a microclimate system for viticulture, um, obviously, you can see our focus on viticulture right now because uh, um, there's a motivation behind that. Um, grapes are probably amongst the only plants that are actually grow, grown specifically for their quality, i.e. the aromas they compress. So the driver for, for growing them is slightly different. But as I think uh, human society becomes more conscious of importance of natural nutrition within the plants, we might choose to grow other plants because of that. Like we might grow a uh, tomato for lycopene rather than just the amount. And when that transformation happens, our technology should be an enabler to um, really naturally enhance what people are, are doing right now and enable them to do that um, the way it should have or could have been. So, um, you know, through that prism, I think we are really interfering with with the overall food chain and every community uh, globally. Yeah, so to talk a little bit more about that, because I know with Adfield, you've talked about how ag tech, um, Internet of Things, actually maximizes the wine production and the yield, I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, but, and, and how it links the consumer with the vineyard you had talked to me about also. Um, share a little bit more about what that means, what that looks like, how that happens. Yeah, I'll, uh, I, I, I might give you a, an example. Um, in what we've found in kind of deploying our system uh, of sensors across vineyards is that um, obviously um, vineyards are, um, you know, wines per se are living creatures, right? So um, although we try to kind of unify them or to make them uh, aligned with, you know, growing in a similar way or from same clonal selection or whatever we do, they generally behave differently. Um, but um, there's another layer of that difference which comes from microclimates or microfields. Um, it's literally the variation in uh, humidities and temperatures across, uh, let's say, a relatively small uh, portion of area. Um, so what happens is in some vineyards, which generally seem very homogenous, um, you can actually have a difference of even up to 10 uh, Fahrenheit in some periods of day in temperature. Mm -hmm. That effectively means that plants have different development conditions. Now, 
um, due to simply the uh, fact that um, some of the science behind this uh, has been created 50 years ago and has been quite sufficient to get us where we've gotten up until now. And in the same time, um, if you want to measure and interact with the field um, non-homogeneously, so differently from block to block or even from row to row or from section to section, the whole thing becomes more complex. So, uh, you know, it has been a bit difficult to actually um, take this fact and make it your advantage. Um, and now uh, our technology um, that actually measures and then a software that processes these differences enables wine growers to identify these zones and, uh, for example, treat them differently. So you, are, you have an option not to spray everywhere, but spray only at a specific part of the vineyard. Or you know that the specific part of the vineyard is slightly more humid and can sustain a bit more load. So you allow a bit more yield there. Or you can say you're watering, kind of watering some part and not watering the other part. That actually brings a whole um, layer of flexibility in kind of how to most sustainably interact with fields and crops. And that's exactly the change we are trying to inspire and bring to the world. So when you say um, when you say spray, what do you mean? What do you mean? Um, like chemical intervention or, uh, you know, organic spraying, depending on how do you protect your plants from uh, diseases, fungus, uh, insects, or whatever the intervention is needed. Um, you know, that's one of the uh, most CO2 consuming operation. Um, it generally happens, especially in the climates that are slightly more demanding. So let's say not the uh, driest part of California, but some of the more humid parts uh, in states like Oregon or Washington state, um, you might be tempted to spray even 12 times a year. Um, so it essentially means, uh, you know, bringing tractors, water, chemicals into fields and actually, uh, you know, spraying plants. Um, and, you know, we right now are quite certain you can, you can at least min uh, save 20% of that. So you can literally uh, uh, take out 20% of that intervention. You can just imagine how massive an impact would that be globally if that happens. And, and do you ever get any pushback from those who say absolutely no chemicals whatsoever? Uh, yes, but even in that specific case, uh, still you have to intervene. So um, people spray uh, some inorganic uh, uh, chemicals like sulfur um, to simply uh, slow down development of undesired microorganisms. It's a natural compound and it doesn't really stay there, it just evaporates. Um, so there's always a slight uh, level of intervention. Um, non fully uh, avoiding intervention would mean lo lots of manual labor, um, which as we know is not um, really something we can afford today. Um, you know, not too many people are actually uh, uh, willing to spend their time outside all the time in the sun and kind of intervening. So you have to be really um, balancing all of that when you're uh, growing a crop like, uh, like a wine grape. And one thing I love that you said is you said, imagine if every small town like we have here in Serbia could have this, um, I believe that's what you said, or I'm paraphrasing it. Um, share, share what you meant by that. Yeah, well, um, if, um, you know, what we are saying um, should, is kind of really uh, what's going to happen. And you can, for example, eliminate 20% of spraying globally just in vineyards. That means um, a huge amount of water not being used to spray, uh, a significant amount of energy not being used to produce chemicals, uh, lots of fuel saved. So it has a really global impact. Um, if you know that, for example, about 30% of uh, world's food is thrown away today, you know, some of this uh, intervention we are enabling might actually compensate for, for what the waste is. So, this is really the power of, of technology that we are trying to leverage. Yeah, and um, give me a little segue here. When you said about, you know, you know, people don't want, maybe can't health-wise stay outside all the time. And we, we do a lot in, in the world of, of the well-being of employees and talent and everything. So what role do you see leaders playing, leaders who care really about their their people, whether it's employees or whether it's municipal or state or regional governments about their citizens, 
having, what responsibility do they have for the financial, the physical, and the mental well-being of their people? Yeah, well, I think whoever dictates uh, or influences the life of another being has great responsibility on how they do that. Mm -hmm. uh, I can obviously, and I will uh, talk about that through a personal prism, and I think I've always been a person that likes to lead by an example um, in the sense of, you know, if um, I'm not doing something, I'm obviously not expecting you not to do, but I expect you to understand why that is happening and then to show you what kind of influence could, could that have. Um, in terms of, um, you know, leadership, I, I think, um, you know, really key things are, you know, understanding that people are different and uh, really nurturing the possibility of creating great world based on these differences and understanding of the differences and then helping people um, you know find some kind of um, similarities within those differences and kind of grow on top of that and I think we often, as humans, are, are um, entitled to um, obviously see differences, um, although they're a much smaller part of our, you know, of personal beings than the similar similarities. And I think, you know, a kind of a balance or, or some kind of a mixture of all of that is, um, you know, what a leader should enable and inspire to kind of grow into. Um, you know, hopefully a, a much better society for, for example, for my kids, but not all for my kids, for, for all the kids in the world. Right? Yeah, no, that, it, well, that's well said. You know, my, um, my grandparents, one of my grandma's moms, on so mom's side, they always used to say, they were from Kiev, Ukraine, and uh, we grew up in Canada, that's where they had come to. And they would also say, um, in their accent, they would say, the most important thing is that you have your health. That's the most important thing. And then education, obviously, but the health, and it wasn't like a, a branding or a slogan it was like real life type of thing and um do you find that um with covid with technology going super fast with justice i mean there's a lot of things that mother nature is not really happy about right now um that there's been if you will an awakening of what's important for people um well i see that people are definitely thinking a bit longer like um, in, in terms of longer term, like they've, everybody has seen that something can come out of nowhere and really uh, fundamentally change our lives or fundamentally change what we can do and what we cannot do. So some things that have been here forever have been just taken away by, you know, um, and, you know, just a funny fact, I think uh, in the beginning of pandemia, like maybe uh, April 2020, uh, I read that there was like maybe it might be a, it might sound a bit weird, but 10 grams of virus in the whole world. <laughs> so like if 10 grams of something can actually disturb really every life on this planet, then it tells you that um, you really have to appreciate what you what you've been born with what you are good at, your friends, your environment, uh, the things that are around you. So I think that's an obvious change that is generally present. Now, um, as always, there are people that take a kind of fatalist approach. So they would be more like, you know, it's gone. I better do whatever I'm able to do. But essentially, um, I think, or at least I hope, uh, you know, the other uh, group that actually is able to make the change is going to kind of simply um, be a ma majority and create an, an environment that, um, you know, really keeps on providing us with all the resources for, for great life everywhere. Yeah, no, it's a, it, we, we generally have short memories, but I think, I think the urgency of, of, of it now has um, hopefully come into into play that exactly like you said look what then can happen if we didn't learn from this it'll be more of a tragedy than it was at, at the end of the day so um with that last thing i want to ask on this part is um you know i had a client tell me in 2021 he was talking about the year 2020 and he said the year has flown by slowly and i thought that was like a brilliant statement because they're it's like sweet and sour they flew by slowly 
And then 2021 went super fast for some, some crazy reason. But can you tell me what you're grateful for and also what you're hopeful for in the future? Well, I, I must uh, relate back to, um, you know, the quote from your uh, grandmom, like, um, health is really what I, I've been grateful for. Like, uh, um, I, I've personally had uh, COVID and, you know, it was really mild. Uh, and the very fact that, uh, you know, that indicates that, for example, my immune system is okay in good shape, that's really good because that tells you that, for example, your habits are okay. It might be the fact that I'm slightly younger as well, but the point is, um, it gives you some feedback on, uh, you know, the overall situation of your body. Um, and that's a good basis to kind of, you know, have dreams on. Like, that means that you, you can hope to be here, <laughs> you know, to, to actually see what you're dreaming of. So that's really what, what kind of struck me. Um, you know, although health we sometimes take for granted. And, you know, even if you look at the medical profession, effectively, um, these guys are, you know, we are generally healthy beings. Like we are not, uh, you know, in most of the cases, uh, people are just fine without intervention. But, you know, this specific uh, thing that uh, came out of nowhere actually showed us the importance of that thing that we somehow take from, from granted. How important it is for you to be able to plan tomorrow, to hope that, you know, you'll have a chance to do something tomorrow. That's really important. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And what I'm hopeful of, I'm hopeful that uh, we will be, you know, get into position where we appreciate human interaction much more. Uh, what that means, um, you know, the very fact that two of us are talking actually means a lot because um, we are actually sharing some values that hopefully are common. We might also have some dissimilarities, but the very fact that there is this interaction creates um, uh, something new. And that's really what's, what's um, you know, really great thing about being here, being around, sharing what you think, uh, sharing how you feel, um, interacting with our other people. Uh, now, obviously, none of us are perfect. We are, uh, you know, human beings. But, you know, that's what, you know, kind of somehow essence of, of, of kind of being a human is, you know, spend time and, and, and kind of in the, not indulge, but kind of share what you know, like share what you think uh you know interact with people yeah i agree i think the only thing perfect about us is that we're not absolutely and that's like probably written in stone the only thing <laughs> <laughs> exactly but you know what um it's the different ideas and, and interaction like you said that that lead us to you know better things ahead and uh and energize energize us you know otherwise if we're all the same with the same ideas what, what's the purpose of that right so I agree with you. I'm, I'm hopeful for that too. And, uh, and I'm appreciative that you uh, really are a leader who cares and uh, making a difference in, in, in your country and then the world. So thank you for that. And thanks for joining us. Yeah, I'm most welcome. And I'm really glad to be talking to you and sharing uh, some of our views from here. Um, so um, great, to, great to be here.